Topaz Slab has released Denoise AI update and now it runs natively on Apple M1 Sosi. Let's find out what type of performance improvement are we getting out of this update. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. I'll be sharing a lot of inside information. Feel free to pause the video so you can analyze the graph yourself. Taking a look at our test and reference system, to keep things very simple, I'm testing three 16-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro and the top M1 Max Sosi. The memory on the machine will be 16, 32, and 64, and we'll be able to see a lot of variation if they do come up, if the program can use that full 64 gigabytes of memory on these machines. I'll be releasing Video Enhanced AI benchmark tests very soon. I'm finishing up some testing right now, and I should have that out soon after this video goes live. Speaking of the workflow in the Part one and part two, I talk about the different workflow using RAW versus JPEG. This is just simply going to be a performance benchmark. So I will use all the images that I've used in part one and two and put it into Denoise AI. For our reference, there's two JPEG files. One of them is going to be the Aurora Nikon DA10 export from Lightroom at 100% JPEG 50.4 megabyte. 192 megapixel panorama export from Lightroom as a JPEG, 128.1 megabyte, and three separate WAV files. The first one will be a normal RAW file straight from Nikon DA10, 36 megapixel. The NEF file itself is 48.1 megabyte. A panorama, this is stitched together in Lightroom from NEF file, but what Lightroom has to do is put together a DNG file instead. So this is still a RAW file and it is 50 megapixel, 184 megabytes. Lastly is a panorama. This is a super huge one that I have done a lot of tests with. It is 192 megapixel. The DNG file size itself is close to 690 megabytes. So let's have a look at how this update performs and how much better it handles these files. Before we do that, I wanna mention one thing. There is a difference between having the program being compiled for M1 binary. That means it's running native on the system. It doesn't have to go through a set of translation layer. And most of the time, yes, we'll see an improvement because there's no longer that extra layer in between the program and the SOC itself. No more translation. However, there is still a big difference between having something run native and having something optimized for the system itself. And it's one step further to go in to optimize the system. But because these M1 silicon from Apple has been really great, I think that a lot of software companies are not really going to dedicate so much resources to really go in and optimize it beyond just compiling the code and making it run natively on these M1 SOCI. But even with this, we're still seeing a good improvement. But I just wanted to point out the differences between those two. The other thing I want to mention is that in all of these image enhancement suites from Topaz, you can go into the program preferences and choose the processor that you want to use. Based on my testing, if you leave it on auto, it's going to target the SOCI in the system anyway, and you're not really going to see that big of a performance improvement, even if you go in or not go in. So personally, if you haven't checked these options yet, you're gonna be fine. If you do, you can target the SOCI. And one thing that you can do in addition to all of this is you can choose how much memory you want the program to use, like allow memory consumption. I set this to high and I haven't seen a difference in the way how the program is utilizing the resources on the system. So the one magic number that I shared in my previous video, it's still pretty much the magic number here. And it's that the memory usage on these machines tend to cap out at around 75% for the actual memory usage. As soon as it starts to reach that 70 to 75% peak, it starts to compress like crazy. And the only difference is having more RAM just requires less compression and also less swapping to the SSD. That's pretty much the difference between all of those. As far as time difference, it's not gonna to be too big of a deal. And just give you the brief conclusion right now, 32 gigabytes, it tends to still be the sweet spot for all these image programs that I'm running and testing it on. So let's have a look at some of the results. Denoise AI, this is from a Nikon DA10 JPEG. We're seeing between the top three charts on those three machines and the bottom three charts. The top three charts are the M1 native. The bottom one is testing based on the Rosetta translation layer. We're seeing about a 30 to 40% improvement in time when we're really putting in this large JPEG file, which is actually pretty good to see. So that just tells you that the SOCI is really good. That is really 
going in there and making a difference. However, if you really look at the timing for this file, it's only like a few seconds apart. It's only four seconds, right? This is not such a huge file that it makes that big of a deal. This is not time that really spans into the minutes. So always keeping the time in perspective as well as we're looking at all these shards. This is the JPEG 128 megabyte file. And again, we're seeing about anywhere between a 30 to 40% improvement depending on the machine. In fact, on the this machine, the 16 Max with 32 gigabyte, these two, we're seeing close to a 50% improvement. But I think this is more of the oddity rather than the norm. I think the norm that we're seeing is anywhere between 20 to 40% improvement, which that is still really good, especially if you're throwing in a lot of files in this program and having a process and do a noise reduction in a batch type workflow. This is the noise AI. This is the raw file 48.1 megabyte. And that's the file that I put in the corner for reference. For this one, we're seeing almost no difference in time whatsoever, a second apart. So we're really not seeing too big of a difference when it comes to just working with raw files. And this is telling us that if you have already gone out and expand the file out like into a JPEG, you have already exported that, you put it in here, you're gonna see a greater performance improvement. If you do raw files, especially if you're doing like, for example, 36 megapixel, 45 or even 60 megapixel raw file, you're not gonna see too huge of a difference in Denoise AI. When it comes to a larger type of DNG file, larger type raw file, 184.1 megabytes, this is 50.8 megapixel. So for these tasks, we're seeing about six to seven seconds improvement in time. And this accounts for, like I said, about 30%, 35% on average, which is what we're expecting to see. So the larger the raw files you put into this program, the more improvement you're gonna see. However, one thing that I also wanna point out is that the 64 and 32 gigabytes are pretty much performing just about the same. Let's see if we throw in a really large panorama, if this is going to show us any difference. Four seconds improvement. I would say it's definitely not worth it getting at 64 gigabytes if you're hoping that these programs would go in and use more and utilize all the system or the RAM resources available. Now, the advantage of this is less swapping on the system. That's the first thing. And secondly, if you are a multitasker, well, you don't have to worry about the system really swapping to the SSD that much, if at all. And the performance between these two we're seeing, this is more so, I would say, between like 20 to 30%, depending on the machine. We're seeing about an average of like 30. So I think that's going to be like a safe number when you run the native processes. So if you have Denoise AI and you have a new computer, I mean, definitely update, why not, right? So here's my thought on Denoise AI running natively on Apple Silicon. It's always great to see a performance improvement and getting anywhere between 20 to 40% is really great. On average, I think that we can expect about 30% improvement. And ultimately, as you've seen from my sample, it's really going to depend on the type of picture, the type of file, whether it's raw, JPEG, or TIFF that you put into the program, and it's going to yield a slightly different result. So the improvement, it's not necessarily going to be across the board, 30 to 40%. It really depends on the file type. Now, what this is a good indicator for is the fact that the other image enhancement suite that have yet to run native on Apple Silicon, we're probably going to see the improvement in a very similar fashion and that would be a good thing. One last thing I want to mention about this is the installer for Denoise AI has changed. So before then you have to go through the installer yourself. Now they have made the program self-contained. What you do is you just mount the DMG, drag the program over and you're ready to go. So they have changed the way how the software is being verified on the system itself, the way how they sign and code the software which are all great moves in the right direction, especially to get things running on these Mac a lot faster and much easier. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit the bell to renew. And remember, in art we trust.